Hi, I'm Ivan Zut, and I want to spend a moment today talking to you about Cosmetology Barber Crossover. You know, it's one of the most popular phenomenons in the United States in the beauty industry today. Cosmetologists wanting to go back to school to get their barber license to be able to do barbering. And I always say, cos school didn't make you a cosmetologist. Barber school won't make you a barber. There's no need to spend hundreds of hours and thousands of dollars going back to school to do things that you can do with knowledge, information, and the proper tools. And what I hope to share in this video is two important things. Number one, I hope to share with you how to charge $5 more for every single men's haircut that you do. How to do more, be more, give more, and therefore be worth more, and therefore charge more for every men's haircut that you cut. And number two, I want to share with you a way that you can use, suggest, and recommend professional take-home hair care product so powerfully that you can explode your take-home hair care product sales beyond your wildest dreams and sell more product and have more product moving through your shop, more of those retail dollars moving through your cash register than you ever imagined before. Are you ready to achieve those two goals? Are you ready to go with me on this journey? Let's go. Before we go, let's talk about a little bit of history. I think it's important to recognize that barbering has many rich traditions and lots of incredibly uh, powerful and valuable history. It's also important to remember that barbers, not cosmetologists, barbers invented retailing. Barbers invented the notion of selling products, not just services, to their customers. If you go back far enough, Victorian era, at that time, a barber's value, a barber's prestige, and a barber's wealth was measured by the size of his mug rack. You'll see pictures of barber shops from back in the 1800s with massive mug racks over into the 20th century with these enormous racks of shaving mugs. Shaving mugs are valuable antiques and shaving mug collection is a subcategory of antique collecting that has many avid followers and lots and lots of money changing hands for some beautiful shaving mugs. But mugs were the original barbershop retail item and barbers had a reputation for being a little heavy-handed with their mug retailing. Mugs were custom designed and custom crested. They would have your initials, they might have your occupation, frequently hand painted and lettered, occasionally with gold foil and all kinds of incredible, beautiful ornamentation. And what a barber would do is a barber would order a shaving mug for a customer, and back in those days it wasn't a lot of money, but it was a lot of money compared to the cost of other things. And a barber would say to a customer, I ordered you up, Mr. Smith, this custom shaving mug with a big gold S. It's your mug. We'll keep it here in the mug rack to use for you when you visit. And don't worry. We'll just add a penny on every haircut until it's paid off. They literally sold their take-home products on installment. And you didn't even take them home. You left it in the rack because that rack, again, was a measure of the status and prestige of the barber. So there was a lot of incentive for the barber to sell those mugs, not just the money he was making. And there was a lot of incentive for him to display them because he was flexing. He was showing off who he was and how important he was, how big his clientele was. The beauty industry, cosmetologists, people like Jerry Redding and Paula Kent in the 1960s and 70s established retailing as a fundamental part of cosmetology and the barbers lost their way. Well, the cosmetologists, they've lost their way too. Salon retailing is not nearly what it could be and what it should be. So we're going to take a look at the procedure and the process for a lathered neckline shave and cleanup for our men's haircuts for the purpose of adding dramatic value to take a haircut from an ordinary haircut to a luxury experience, thereby allowing us to justify higher prices. Remember I said five more dollars on every men's haircut starting tomorrow with a simple procedure I'm going to show you. And not only am I going to show you how to create that spa experience that's worth more, but I'm going to show you how to tie that experience into take-home products, products that you can use in the shop and send customers home with to use on their own at home that they will gladly pay you for and be happy to purchase. So, let's get started. 
neckline shaving. You know, I live in the state of Illinois, and in the state of Illinois, they'll tell you a barber license is required to use a razor on skin. And that's only partially true, because if you use a wire-wrapped blade, and it's hard to see on camera, I know that, but there's a wire wrapping over the top of this blade that protects the blade from direct contact with the skin. It still shaves super clean and close, but it provides you with a big fat loophole that as a cosmetology professional, you can step right through. As a cosmetologist, you can use this feather nape razor with its interchangeable wire wrapped safety guarded blades on the back of every single client's neckline, ear area, and sideburn area for beautiful precision cleanup. I'm going to show you the process and the procedure. I'm going to show you how to change blades. I'm going to show you how to dispose of blades safely and properly, and then we'll get into the service. Now, it's important to know one of the keys to the neckline cleanup service is hot lather. And while I, as a client, love to have my neckline hot lathered, as a barber, I have a problem with hot lather. And the problem with hot lather is I can't sell hot lather and I can't make any money with hot lather. And if I can't sell it and make money with it, I have a problem with it. However, hot lather is a fundamental part of the experience. I don't have a hot lather machine for my demo here, so I'm going to use this 99 cent can of Barbasol shave cream as a way of demoing the hot lather experience. But please know, for many barbershop clients, the warmth, the feel, the smell, and the experience of hot lather is fundamental to why they're coming into the shop to experience this in the first place. So, here's what we're going to do. For our purposes today with the demo, we're going to pretend to be using hot lather, but we'll be using this. Now, I've heard people say they put shave cream in the cap and they put the cap in the microwave. I'm not suggesting you do that. You can't control the heating of a microwave. You can get hot spots and you can very badly and dangerously burn someone. But get a hot lather machine. They cost about $150. The soap costs pennies. They're not expensive. I still want you to use hot lather, but I don't want you to only use hot lather because I really don't want to use anything that I can't make money with. The rule is anytime you ever use something on a client, you should only use something that is available for purchase up front. So for our purposes, we're going to pretend this is hot lather. We do our haircut and we're ready for our neck shave service. We're going to take some hot lather out of the machine. You didn't see me take that out of the can. That's hot lather from a machine. And we're going to apply the hot lather to the neckline area that we hope to shave. Now, please remember, this is a mannequin. This is not a human. So the hot lather will not go on there quite the way it goes on a human. But I'm going to come up around the back like I do in the shop. And I'm going to come to the sideburn area and around the ear area very nicely. Now, this is applying hot lather. And the client says, ooh, and the client says, ah, and the client is truly experiencing and enjoying this warm lather experience. That's what they do. They like it, and they love it, and they're happy to pay more for it. So we're going to do that. I'm going to wipe up my excess lather. Now, the next secret is the steam towel. You can spend $150 on a steam towel cabinet if you wish. I think it's a great idea. They're not expensive. They work well. You put a little essential oil in the steam towels for fragrance. Steam towels are the best part of the barbershop experience. So I'm not going to tell you not to use steam towels. Like I'm not going to tell you not to use hot lather, but I'm going to tell you how to enhance the process. If you do not have a hot lather machine, I'm going to show you how to do it old school, how to make a steam towel using towels in your shop and using hot running water from your sink. So take your towel, fold it in half the long way like this. Fold it in half again so it looks like that. It's folded in quarters. Now you're going to roll your towel. You're going to roll your towel nice and tight in a roll just like that. You're going to turn your sink on. You're going to turn the water to hot, 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 hot. As hot as you can get it. Now, meanwhile, the client's got that hot lather on there. You're going to hold the towel under the hot running water, and you're going to run the water right down the center of the towel. Hot, 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 hot. And the towel's getting hot, and the steam's rising off of it. It's creating that luxury spa experience. When the towel is fully saturated with hot, hot, hot water, 
Watch what you're going to do. You're going to switch the water from hot to cold. Pull the towel out, switch the water from hot to cold, put your hand under the cold running water. Cold, 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 cold. Then switch the towel to the cold hand and put the other hand under the cold water. Cold, 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 freezing cold, freezing cold. Pull it out, grab the hot, hot, hot towel with two freezing cold hands and wring out the excess water. The reason you chill your hands is the towel's too hot. If you grab that hot towel with a regular temperature hand, you're going to scald or burn your hand. But with that hand chilled under the cold water, shut the water off. Now you squeeze out the water from the towel. The inside of the towel is hot and steaming. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to open up the towel. You're going to shake it out like this to drop the temperature just a little bit. And then you're going to put it on the client right on top of that hot lather. Ooh, that feels so good. His eyes are rolling up in his head. He's starting to mumble. He'll buy anything you tell him to buy now. You've got him in the palm of your hand. This is the best part of the barbershop experience. Hot lather and a steam towel is wonderful. And you want to make sure the client really enjoys this. I'm going to use that steam towel to wipe off all of the extra hot lather around the client's neck. Wipe it away, wipe it away, wipe it away, goes away, goes away. We were using the hot lather for the experience, for the warmth, for the smell, for the feeling. We're using the steam towel for those reasons as well. It feels wonderful. It's part of the experience. But we don't make any money on that. We make money because we charge more for the haircuts because of it. Now it's time to get down and dirty with the products that we're going to use that the client can purchase to really deliver the shave service. So here we go. Number one is beard oil. This is our M beard oil and John Amico professional line. I'm going to use just that much, a tiny little drop of beard oil. I'm going to hand my beard oil to the client so the client can hold it and look at it and read the label and touch it. Now with the beard oil on my hand, I'm going to apply the beard oil to the areas of the neckline that I'm going to shave. I'm going to apply it as a base. It's creating a lubrication foundation. It's creating a surface on top of which I will put my shave cream. It's protecting the skin. It's softening the hair. It smells good and it feels nice. I'm going to apply that shave cream all over the area that I'm going to shave. Next, I'm going to apply shave cream, and I'm specifically going to apply a shave cream. In this case, Clipper Guy Brushless Shave Cream by John Amico, a shave cream that I have up front for purchase, that I like, that I use, that I endorse, that I sell, and that I recommend. And I'm going to use very, very little. And I'm going to show the client I'm using very, very little. And I'm going to hand the client the shave cream. He's now holding beard oil and shave cream and I'm going to apply the shave cream to the area that I'm going to apply. Now you'll notice again, this is a mannequin, not real skin, but my brushless shave cream does not lather up real crazy. So you can see lines and edges and details. You can see the area you're going to be working on over the ear and apply it to the sideburn on your side, applied to the sideburn, applied up over and around the ear. This is the area we're going to shave. We've now applied a shave cream, the shave cream that we stock and sell in the shop. Now it is time to shave the neckline. I'm going to go to my feather nape razor. I'm going to eject a blade and I'm going to dispose of the used spent blade in a properly labeled professional sharps bin. It's gone. Safely disposed of. I'm going to pick up from my nape razor blade package. I'm going to open up the package and I'm going to pick up using the razor handle and the no touch system a brand new fresh blade. There you go, in the razor and ready to go. Every client gets a brand new blade. Now, when it comes to shaving, it's important to recognize more shaving happens here than here. More shaving happens with this hand than it really does with this hand. This hand is simply gliding off the hair. All of the tension, all of the pressure, and all of the control, and all of the 
guidance happens with this hand. Now, the folks at Gillette in these commercials have been lying to us for many, many years. They show a guy with a face filled with foam and they show him plowing through the foam with a razor to shave like a snow plow in winter. We just don't do that. Barbers don't do that. What we do is we clear the area first before we shave. The purpose of shave cream is lubricate the skin, soften the hair, and prepare the area for shaving. So when we properly shave, we do this. We take our thumb, we wipe away the shave product, and we wipe it on the towel that the client is wearing. I have a robo collar on my model. I do not have a towel because he doesn't have shoulders. But we wipe it on the towel. We wipe it away. We wipe it on the towel. Then we put our thumb on the head and we pull up tension. I'm pushing vertically with my thumb and I come in and I gently scrape away the hair. The purpose of wiping with our thumb is twofold. Number one, we clear away the shave cream so we can see the surface that we're shaving. And number two, we're feeling the skin. If there's a mole, if there's a bone structure issue, if there's an imperfection in the skin, I want to know where I'm putting that razor before I put it. So we come up over the ear. We wipe away the shave cream. We wipe our thumb on the towel. Then we come in with tension on the skin and we clean up around the ear. We clean up around the ear. We clean up around the ear. We turn the chair slightly and the process continues. We wipe off the shave cream. We wipe the shave cream on the cape. We apply tension to the skin and we shave. And then we wipe the razor on the towel to clear the razor and we repeat the process. Thumb wipes away the cream, thumb wipes away the cream. Razor peels away the hair, razor wipes away the refuse. Thumb wipes away the cream, thumb wipes away the cream, thumb picks up tension, razor peels away hair, razor is wiped on the cape and the process starts over all the way around the head. That is proper neck shave and cleanup. With a low angle, little or no pressure, allowing the sharpness of the razor to do its job, and as a cosmetologist taking advantage of the wire wrapping that is the loophole in the law that makes that legal for everyone on the back of the neck in that way. The last thing we do is we will come in and we'll do our steam towel again. If the steam towel is the best part of the experience, more steam towel is more best part. So what, and you can use the same towel. All it had is hot water and a little shave cream on it. Roll it up again, back under the hot, 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 hot water, hot, 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 pull it out, switch to cold, cool your hand, cool your hand, wring out your towel, open it up, shake it out to regulate its temperature, cool it just a little, and put it back on there. Remember, if the steam towel is the best part, two steam towels is twice as much best part. The client's gonna love this experience. We're gonna hold that steam towel there for a minute. We'll talk to him about the products that we used and the work that we did and how nice this worked and how happy he is. And then we'll wipe away any excess with that second steam towel and we've got one more thing left. We used beard oil as a pre-shave lubricant. We used brushless shave cream, Clipper Guy brushless shave as our shave cream. Both items we have available for purchase at the front of the store. We used hot lather because it's part of the experience, but we can't make any money with hot lather. And we're gonna finish it all up with After Buzz. After you shave, you use After Shave. After a haircut, you use after buzz. When we're done with a haircut with a clipper and a trimmer and a comb and a razor, the skin is red and it's hot and it's irritated and it's itchy and it's uncomfortable. That's where after buzz comes in. After buzz is the after haircut advanced formula scalp care product that really changes the game. We're going to put a little bit in our hand. We're going to hand it to our client, tell them what it is and what it does. We're going to rub our hands together and we're going to apply it to the clippered portion of the haircut and the back and the sides and the edges and the shaved surfaces all the way around the back side 
and the sides of the haircut. It smells good. It feels great. It cools the scalp and the skin. It reduces redness and irritation. It reduces itching. It prevents the development of ingrown hairs and it sanitizes the surface of the scalp. A multifunction product that we call Advanced Formula Scalp Care. That's After Buzz by Clipper Guy for John Amico. So what we've ended up doing now is we've ended up using three take home hair care, skin care, shave care products that can be used and enjoyed in the shop and that can be used and enjoyed at home. We take him up front, we rebook his appointment, we re ask for the referral of his friends and family, we suggest and recommend them, we close the sale on professional take home hair care product. Be by giving more, doing more, and being more for our client, that haircut's worth $5 more starting tomorrow and by using, suggesting, and recommending as part Part of service delivery, quality professional hair care products, even more opportunity to build and grow your business. You want to be a $100,000 hair cutter? I want to help you. I'm Ivan Zood. I'm Clipper Guy. ClipperGuy.com is my website for more information on all of this. Like the video, subscribe the video, comment on the video, share the video with your barber and cosmetology friends, and let me help you build and grow your business. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.